What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. Disclaimer, my voice sounds a little weird. I'm on vacation. I went and had a great time with my family yesterday. We did a lot of screaming. And so here I am today. I'm going to give you guys my review of the Sony E3 press conference. Now, let me say this. Before Sony came out and did their conference, I was really, really uh, apprehensive about what to expect. Microsoft, they came out hard, they came out swinging, and they did a hell of a job to show us that they were all about games. They didn't mention TV or entertainment other than video games during the whole press conference. I don't think Microsoft mentioned the Kinect once. So Sony had a really high standard to live up to, and I'm going to talk about what they did and whether I think they lived up to it or not. Sony came out, the very first thing they showed was a game that Many people, myself included, have been wanting to see for many, many years. I'm still giddy talking about it today. They show The Last Guardian, which is a PlayStation 4 exclusive that's been in development for about a decade. This game has been uh, in the development stages since the end of Shadow of the Colossus. And they brought it out. They showed us what the actual game looks like. They showed us this young boy and this this guardian, this creature that walks around with him and interacts with him and helps him throughout this world. They show the dynamic of how they help each other. And it felt like a eco game. It really did. It felt like I had the same feeling watching this that I did the first time I saw Shadow of the Colossus. It just, it just feels so good to see that they finally got their shit together and they're making a game that looks like will live up to the hype. I'm really happy about this game. Like many of you guys, I'm super excited. And that's how Sony started their conference. So I knew right then, okay, they're starting with this. They got to have some good stuff. And I think they did. So after The Last Guardian, they moved on to Guerrilla Games' new secret weapon, Horizon. Now, Guerrilla is known primarily as the studio that makes Killzone games. And so with that in mind, a lot of people didn't know what to expect. There were there were rumors of it being RPG or being a different type of game. And Horizon blew my mind. I think out of every game I saw at E3 this year, Horizon was my favorite one to watch. It's the, the best new IP, I think, by far. Uh, it shows this young female character that is reminiscent of a, I guess you'd call a uh, K, a wild woman. I can't say cave woman. This is a post apocalyptic game where modern society has died. It shows the cities all desolate and they talk about the old ones, which are talking about people of, of today, how we all died off and how these machines were left behind. And they don't know. She talks about this during the trailer. They don't know what happened to us and why the machines are here. But I'm telling you now. It's a Terminator scenario. These machines were basically Skynet. Somebody made AI. AI decided that we were not worthy to be here, and they wiped us out. And so in the future, there are these robotic dinosaur-type creatures and human beings with new technology, but they live in a primitive society. So it's going to be a really awesome story. I'm hoping that they're able to make a really engaging story. The game already looks totally phenomenal. I'd say just based on the way the game looks, I'd give it a 10, but... The thing with Gorilla, sometimes their stories can be lacking. Uh uh, kills on Shadowfall. So I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly what happens with Horizon. It looks really stunning. It won lots of awards at E3, and I was really happy to see it at Sony's press conference. Sony continued on with Hitman. Now, it's not Hitman blank name. It's just Hitman. It's like a reboot or a reimagining of the original, I would suspect. They're going back to the drawing board with Agent 47. It showed a lot of nice scenes. It showed a lot of open world type environments. It showed him killing someone with a sniper rifle way out in the woods. And I think it's good. I think that Square is uh, making some really good choices, especially at this E3. They really back Sony really well. And if you're into the Hitman series and you'd like to potentially see this game reborn, Hitman is going to be coming to PlayStation 4. And it's going to uh, receive six unique contracts with the PlayStation 4 in the first year. So I like to see the way that they're, these companies are backing the the, the uh, video game console of their choice in specific ways. And I think it's really impressive. And I think that Hitman will do really well this year. Street Fighter V is coming to the PlayStation 4. And a lot of you guys probably already know this. 
Uh, if you're not a fan of this game, there's probably something wrong with you. The Street Fighter is amazing. I mean, I've been playing it since the originals, uh, way back in 92, 93. Street Fighter was really amazing to me. And when I first found out that this is going to be a PlayStation 4 console exclusive, I, it was like a double take moment. I was like, what the hell is going on? It's true. It's going to be only PlayStation 4 as far as consoles and PC. And so, Sony is co-developing this game with Capcom. They are actually putting their own work and effort into the, making this a, a special uh, video game experience. And I'm really excited to see it. I think the game really looks amazing. Uh, you can tell that it's not last gen. Just looking at the character models, the animation, all that stuff looks top notch. I'm really excited to see it. I'm really happy that this is happening. And I look forward to playing it. They uh, announced two new characters at E3. They announced Birdie, which is the big brother. And then they announced Cammy, which is the pretty little blonde who wears like basically no clothes. Clothes. And I'm really excited to see this game coming to PlayStation 4. If you don't have a PS4 and you're on another console and you want this game, you have got to have a PS4 to play it. And I think that was a really good move for Sony at E3. It just gave their conference so much more power. Media Molecule, the company that makes video games that are strange but always amazing, like Little Big Planet, has come out with their new game. Now, a lot of people know that, that Little Big Planet is Media Molecule's baby. Little Big Planet 3 was actually not developed by Media Molecule. They've been working on something new. And they actually showed this off at E3, kind of in concept, what this game is. It's called Dreams. It's really hard to explain. Uh, it's a game where you actually create your own dreams and you animate them and make them do what you want them to do. They showed a myriad of things uh, in this trailer. They showed... Uh, creation of a, of a male character playing a piano they showed uh polar bears in the snow they showed zombies versus teddy bears pretty much what they're saying is your imagination is the limit kind of like the stuff that you could do with little big planet and little big planet 2 how you were able to create they made a game just solely based on creation so if you wanted to make you know anything you can make your family you can make you know a, an alien race you can make all kinds of crazy stuff animate them in a dreamlike environment and it does look it looks exciting. I don't know what to expect out of it, but all I know is it looks like something I really do want to try. It's one of those situations where if it is what they, what they're selling it as, it's going to be one of those amazing games that everybody needs to at least experience once in their life. So I'm looking forward to it. I think Media Molecule as a company, as a name, they stand on that name alone. And usually when they make something, it's a pretty uh, impressive feat. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. That was also another big, big hit for PlayStation's, uh, E3 press conference, and I think Media Molecule is going to do some magical things this year. Destiny, the game. A lot of people are playing this game. I was actually playing this. I went through a lot of new stuff in the House of Wolves, <laughs> and I'm really enjoying it. I went to the Prison of Elders, beat that, and I was like, holy shit, it's really nice. Uh, they announced the, t the Taken King, the new DLC, uh, and they pretty much went through a lot of the story aspects, what's going to be happening in the game, who's after you in this game. Uh, Crota's father is going to be after you. This guy looks really scary. He's got big yellow eyes. <laughs> and, and it looks exciting. Destiny is one of those games. It, it just grows and grows and grows, and it gets better and better. It feels like a, a traditional first-person shooter, but it has the qualities of an incredible MMO. It's really like a, a lightning-in-a-bottle type of game. It's, it's, you just don't see it often. A game like this continually growing. It's growing in subscriptions. It's growing in people playing it. It's growing in content. It's a lot of great stuff, and I'm looking forward to it. Of course, I will have that. Uh, the Taken King DLC will hit September 15th, and everybody's going to be playing it, including me. Another game was announced uh, a console debut of a game called Firewatch, and I didn't know what to expect from this game. It showed what appeared to be a, a mountain man or, or a guy working out in the wilderness, and he has this uh, this walkie, and he's talking to this female who basically is there with you throughout the entire game, talking you through the game. And at first, I didn't know what to expect. They, you know, they had some witty banter back and forth, and then. It kind of took a crazy turn. The, the lady on the the, the uh, microphone tells you that there's two girls missing out there in the woods where you were, and that you were the last person to see them. You're like, what the hell's going on? It's, it's like animated suspense. This story takes this crazy turn where you're out here trying to find these people who apparently have been kidnapped or something. She tells you that there's somebody sitting in your tower. You turn and look, and you see that there's somebody out there. Your lights are on. So it does have a very suspenseful feel, and I like that. But the, the, the crazy thing is it doesn't look like you'd expect that to look. It's like one of those games or one of the movies like Out in the Wild where you're, there are mountain men out there killing people or something, but it looks like Borderlands or something. So I'm excited to see it. I really am. 
am. I think Firewatch is going to be awesome. I'm happy that they announced it. And I look forward to hearing more about it. And that was another good hit for Sony's E3 press conference. Sony really screwed a lot of people over this year with this <laughs> with this news. They announced World of Final Fantasy. And so World of Final Fantasy is what appears to be a traditional Final Fantasy game set in a very pretty childlike environment the characters are really small uh and the enemies are really big and for some reason you can swap that and make your characters big and the enemies small it's it was really weird and uh they showed this and it's uh playstation 4 and a vita exclusive and of course when i saw that i was like oh okay whatever you know i'm used to that at this point uh square just giving people whatever you know they got final fantasy 15 coming so why the hell even be concerned with it right and then <laughs> Within 45 seconds, they hit with the biggest okie doke one two punch rope a dope against the ropes hit of my life. They announced Final Fantasy VII, the remake. And I don't know about you guys, but some people actually went ape shit during this remake. Oh, uh, man, I couldn't contain myself. I look at that video now. It's got like 140,000 views. It just went crazy. And I could not contain myself with this news. It, it means so much to me as a gamer to see what Sony did uh, and what Square did. They actually brought the, the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of so many gamers to life, to fruition. I mean, I love Final Fantasy, but I was there when it when it first was made. And nowadays, a lot of people, when they see that game and they see the visual aesthetic, they don't want to even give it a chance because games like, you know, The Last of Us exist, games like Destiny exist, and, and games that look visually more pleasing are out here everywhere. They're plentiful. So a person would easily pick another game based on the way it looks instead of understanding that there's so much more than the visual aesthetic of Final Fantasy VII. I was really excited about it. And to me, that was my favorite news from E3's press conference, this entire press conference, was Sony announcement of uh, being first to have uh, the Final Fantasy 7 remake. Now, I don't know what the deal is with being first. I know the Final Fantasy 7 was a PlayStation 1 game, so I don't know exactly what rights Sony has to it. I'm really questioning whether or not this would actually be on the Xbox. I don't know if it will. What uh, you know, contracts have to be made or what kind of deals have to be made. I don't know if it's PlayStation first and then PC later. I have no idea. But in my mind, Final Fantasy 7 was a PlayStation 1 game. I've never seen Final Fantasy 7 Digital go on any other consoles but PlayStation consoles. I don't think it's on any Xbox consoles. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work. But that was a really, really exciting news. For me, it blew my mind. As you guys saw, it totally blew my mind. And I was extremely happy. But Sony wasn't done with, you know, giving me tears of joy. Because in the middle of my happiness and excitement from Final Fantasy 7, I'm texting my brother trying to get him to watch the E3 press conference. They announced this a few seconds later. The, the, the guy wouldn't give me a chance to breathe. They announced a Shinmu 3 Kickstarter. <laughs> and this was also news that I didn't think was possible. I mean... Final Fantasy 7, all right. It's been years. People have been asking for this for years. There's no way that they're doing this. Okay, it's real. All right, I'll take that. Shinmu 3, right after that, there's no way this is real. This has to be April 1st. This has to be April 4th. There's no way Sony is doing this. And so they did it. They announced the uh, Shinmu 3 Kickstarter, which already uh, well uh, surpassed all the, the needs for backing. So it's going to happen for sure. Sony is backing it. And um, I was just taken aback. You know, I have so many fond memories of Shinmu. I still play it on Dreamcast today. And uh, to see that world actually fleshed out and, and the continuation and possibly conclusion of an amazing story uh, is something I look forward to more than most people. And those announcements there, that little moment in time, it was probably a, a minute and a half, two minutes worth of uh, announcements that blew my mind, made my brain pop out of my skull. That was that moment there. I couldn't believe it. And those were probably my favorite moments from Sony. The Final Fantasy VII Remake News and the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter. Unfortunately, it's as soon as uh, they started talking about the Final Fantasy VII Remake, remake they immediately went to a Devolver Digitals for uh, indie games. And nobody even heard them. But the games that they announced were Ronin, which is a 2D side scroller stealth action game. Eater, I can't, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, E-I-T-R. It's a pixel art, uh, character action game. 
Mother Russia Bleeds, which is a brutal and bloody 2D brawler, and Crossing Souls, a stylish action adventure game. So that's probably the first time you heard that because <laughs> the first time that they mentioned it was literally 10 seconds after they announced Final Fantasy VII Remake and nobody, no one's brains were working at that time. And so Devolver Digital, unfortunately, they I think he should have waited a little bit before he went right into Devolver's games. But as soon as he said Final Fantasy VII Remake, okay, Devolver, he just went straight to Devolver Digital's games and I don't think anybody heard it. Uh, but that's just the way the cookie crumbled that day. They also announced some Assassin's Creed DLC for Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which isn't even out yet. Uh, they showed some footage from Syndicate. I personally am not an Assassin's Creed fan. I know that's blasphemy for big time Assassin's Creed fans. I just think the story has become convoluted and it's like watching One Life to Live or something or General Hospital. You gotta really, it's like watching a soap opera and, and it's just gotten too much for me. Maybe I'm getting too old, but that's just the case. But they did show some new DLC that's going to be coming to PlayStation 4 only called Dreadful Crimes. And I think it's awesome that uh Sony and Microsoft are you know getting these deals or they're getting time DLC where they're getting DLC exclusive exclusivity and I think it's awesome even for a game I'm not super hyped about like Assassin's Creed Syndicate uh I think it's great news Unlike Microsoft, Sony did spend a few minutes talking about their live streaming television service called Sony View and uh this service is actually pretty unique because it allows you to subscribe to individual stations, individual TV stations. And I think that's pretty awesome. So for people like me who only want to watch certain things and you don't want to subscribe to a huge myriad of stuff that you're not interested in, that might be less expensive and it might be more to the point of what you're doing. And I think it's pretty cool. They only spent a few minutes talking about it and I'm happy that they didn't waste too much time talking about needless stuff. Sony also showed a game that... I, it's still a question to me. I think that technically it's an amazing feat. No Man's Sky. I think the technicality of what they've done is truly amazing. Uh, they, they showed this universe that basically is limitless and they showed stars, which are like grains of sand. There were so many of them. Each star had its own, you know, uh, solar system. And it was just insane. And you can just pretty much pick one, go to the planets, go down there and look and see what it was. And it's all randomly generated, which is insane. But the thing about this game that has me confused, I think that the technical aspect of what No Man's Sky is, is totally amazing and stunning. I just don't know what the hell you're going to be doing. They did show some, uh, space battles where you're fighting you know shooting at other ships and destroying them it seemed extremely easy to destroy the ships i think it was like one shot per ship and they just blew up they also uh, shot something on a planet and it was like one shot and it blew up and if that's the case it's going to be like you know the old arcade game asteroids which will basically remove all uh difficulty if they're going to make you know this game and you're going to be able to shoot enemies i think it needs to be a little bit more realistic rather than a one shot explosion uh, and I just don't know what you're going to be doing in this game. That's my personal thoughts. I have no idea what the, the, the quest is in this game. Now, he did mention that you're going to, your, your quest is to get to the center of the, the galaxy. Uh, but I don't know what that's all about. And if that's the case, you just skip by all these plants and go right to the center of the galaxy. I don't know. I'm hoping, hoping closer to, uh, the release of the game. They explain a little bit more to us and, uh, make us more hungry to play the experience. I think it's awesome, technically, what they've done. I just don't know if the game is going to be exciting. Sony did spend a brief moment talking about Project Morpheus, just like Microsoft did with uh, the HoloLens. I was actually more impressed with Microsoft's showing of their uh, VR technology when they did the whole uh, Minecraft thing. To me, that was amazing. Uh, but Sony did show a little uh, of what they are working on with the the Project Morpheus. And uh, one developer that's made a game that is Morpheus exclusive is uh, Gorilla. And they made a game called Riggs, which is a three versus three eSports style first person shooter uh, set in a VR engine. And it did look pretty impressive. They did show a few other uh, early working titles for, for their VR uh, Project Morpheus. And they did look pretty exciting. I don't know what to expect. I don't know exactly how... VR is going to take a foothold. I don't know if it'll last. I don't know if it'll be like the Wii, you know, the motion controls that nobody plays. I want it to be what I think it can be, 
But until it actually comes and they, they show us a game that you have to play, I'm trying not to get too excited about it. But I, I am happy to see that they did show something for the Project Morpheus at E3 this year. More groundbreaking, earth-shattering news, especially for people who are into esports and who love the Call of Duty brand. PlayStation announced this year at E3 that Call of Duty is now at home on the PlayStation. Uh, previously, for many, many years, Call of Duty has been an Xbox-branded game. I mean, every DLC has been coming to the Xbox first. Uh, all DLCs usually come to the Xbox at least a month early. And uh, that's not the case anymore. Starting with Black Ops 3, Activision has been working with Sony. And Sony is going to get all the DLC first. They're going to get the beta first. Uh, and the, the beta is coming this August to PlayStation 4. And I know that to a lot of people that's not a big deal. To a lot of people it's probably a really big deal. Uh, I'm happy to see the tide kind of turn a little bit. Uh, because for a long time, Xbox fans were talking a lot of shit to Sony fans. And now Sony fans actually get to talk that shit back to them. So if you know somebody who's been talking smack to you uh, from the Xbox camp, now you can actually turn around and talk that smack back to them. I actually think it's pretty smart for Activision to do this. PlayStation 4 has such a large install base at this point compared to the Xbox One, and, and dollars make sense. Uh, it does make sense to move over to the platform that has the bigger install base that's growing uh, at a much faster rate. And uh, it's similar to what's going on with Destiny. You know, Destiny has a lot of exclusive stuff for PlayStation 4, and I think a lot of developers are going to start moving that direction. If you got one console that's doing half of the other, or, or under half, no one in their right mind would stick with that console as far as Xbox exclusivity deals. I do see things like Fallout. Fallout does have a nice little deal with Microsoft where they're able to play mods, but for the most part, I think in the future, we're going to see more and more developers moving toward PlayStation, and I think this Call of Duty news is pretty big news for PlayStation's conference. It did make the conference look good. The biggest news that Sony had at their E3 press conference this year was... I'm just kidding. Disney Infinity, Star Wars. Uh, they showed a lot of Disney Infinity, believe it or not. They showed some exclusive uh, packs, starter packs that you could get. I'm not into Infinity at all. I've never played one of them, uh, and I, I don't think I ever will. I love Star Wars. I think Star Wars is truly amazing, one of my favorite games. I mean, favorite movies of all time. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to Battlefront, but I just cannot get into the Disney Infinity stuff. I just can't do it, personally. But they did show a lot of stuff. If you guys have kids like I do, my kids don't play and they play real games but if you guys have kids and they're into you know collecting little toys and playing the games with them they did show some nice stuff and uh if you're into that that's even better for sony's conference now speaking of star wars star wars battlefront was really big this year at e3 altogether uh they showed a lot of star wars in many different places and they actually showed the first look at battlefront's co-op at sony's press conference which is two-player co-op going through missions, wave and wave after enemy. They show Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, all this great stuff. I think that this game is going to be awesome. I watched the gameplay. It looked like Star Wars. It felt like Star Wars. It sounded like Star Wars. The characters moved like Star Wars. Uh, it just looks really, really awesome. I'm looking forward to playing it. Now, I hear there's no single-player campaign, unfortunately, but I don't need it. I don't care. Just just the experience of what I saw at E3 this year. That's all I need. That's all I want. I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy they've got some co-op missions that you can do. Like me, I'm going to be playing those with my wife. Playing with some of you guys. I'm looking forward to it. And to end E3, Sony ends with... Uh, I don't know how long this, this gameplay trailer was. Maybe 10 minutes of Uncharted 4. Now, the game actually... It glitched out, or maybe the controller didn't work. I don't know what happened, but when the actual gameplay portion began, Nathan was standing in this market, and there were people walking around and doing things, and these people were actually doing stuff. It wasn't like they were just static, just moving their fingers. They were walking around, talking to each other, picking stuff up, walking back and forth, but the controller wasn't working for some reason. So they let it sit there for about 30 seconds, and then they finally restarted the whole demo with... Uh, Nathan and Sully, who looks really awesome, and then they showed this whole scene of them trying to find Nathan's brother, and uh, he, he was being taken away, and it was awesome. It really was. The, the destruction in the environment, the truck, there was this big truck that was uh, after Nathan and Sully that had this turret on it, and it was blowing up the environment, and it was chasing them. And they were driving down this hill, and going under bridges, and going over water, and everything looked amazing. Uh, the game looks phenomenal. I am super excited to play it. I'm probably more excited for this Uncharted than any other Uncharted up until this point. It looks really, really good. Not only that, 
It's helmed by the same team who did The Last of Us, so it's going to be insane. And I think that Sony's conference... I think Sony's conference was the best conference of E3 this year. Now, I know a lot of people think that Microsoft's was. I did give Microsoft's conference an A. Uh, And I think that Microsoft overall did a fantastic job showing off their games. I think that they didn't stop. They did game after game after game after game after game. And I think Sony, for the most part, did the same thing. But for me, Sony had more of a wow factor. Sony had more of an excitement factor. They showed awesome games. They showed Horizon. They showed uh, The Last Guardian. They showed Final Fantasy VII Remake. And even though I don't know if Final Fantasy VII is going to be a console exclusive or not, they showed it. So it made their conference that much more exciting. It was earth-shattering. It broke the internet. I don't know. Some people acted a total fool on these reveals, okay? They showed the Shinmu. Kickstarter that was just earth shattering and it was insane. Okay, they showed No Man's Sky, which is a technical feat um, that just looked amazing. They showed uh, the Uncharted 4 demo, which was probably one of the best uh, demos of the entire show. And uh, I'm going to give Sony's E3 press conference an A plus. That's how it's going to be, guys. I think that they've really went out balls out. They did a great conference. It looked phenomenal. It looked exciting. It got everybody talking. Everybody was talking about Sony's press conference. Everybody. I mean, after they did what they did, nobody was talking about Microsoft anymore because the excitement factor. Everybody was excited to play Final Fantasy. Everybody's excited to play Shinmu. Everybody's excited. There's The Call of Duty guys are excited about this change. No Man's Sky looked amazing. I mean, everything about this conference had me stoked. And I'm really excited about the, the year and the next year to come. I think that uh, as a gamer, as someone who owns Xbox One and PlayStation 4, it's a hell of a time. So I got all the games. I got them all coming my way. So I'm really excited to be able to play them all you know it's going to be a hell of a year it's going to be a hell of a 2016 i hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay footage again please excuse my voice i've been screaming a lot i'm on vacation and i'll go back to work until monday but i wanted to get back and make this video for you guys again thank you guys so much for all the love and support these thumbs up really do matter and they do help my channel quite a bit if you're new to the channel subscribe i'm the beastly gamer and i'll see you guys next time